welcome to the News in Brief. I'm Gaddafi Wells and thank you for joining me on HSTV for Quality News. We give you a brief of the news that made the headlines over the past week. Join me after this break for the hottest in this cold winter. Welcome back. We start with the viral leaked audios of the good son. Now, following a fallout among three controversial businessmen, Wiknel Chivayo, Moses Mpofu and Mike Chimombe, a window into the corruption which surrounds government tendering processes has been opened. Mpofu and Chimombe, unhappy after Chivayo failed to pay them their dues, are suspected to have gone on a rampage, spilling the beans and exposing the rot in government in ZANU-PF up to the top. In leaked audios, Chivayo is heard telling his estranged partners that he is in full control of the levers of power and likens himself to President Emerson Munangagwa's son. Chichenge Tochidi gives us the full story. Takachi Bata Kutiji. I am fully in control, says controversial businessman Wikna Uchivayo in a leaked audio which he later claimed to have been a deep fake. The audio which was leaked in an acrimonious fight for a 40 million United States dollars loot allegedly from the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission has served to expose the rot in the procurement processes and at least opened a window into Chifayo's unexplained wealth. Hey. Oh, I'm poor under thousand US. It keeps you going. How many times have I got payments? I got my payments. Ah, this is the third one. Next week I'm getting another one, which is 5.2 million. The end of August, I'm going to get my money. 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 There's no need to be greedy or to try and aim high and try. And, uh, what I said is bring new work. I'm going to get my money. Following this expose, President Emerson Munangagwa has reminded Mum, as he did when the Gold Mafia documentary by Al Jazeera exposed a gold looting cartel which ended up dragging his name into the net. Instead, Munangagwa's spokesperson using his ex handle sprang to the defense of a man who has all but demonstrated he is close to the president. Chivayo has had the privilege of flying in the presidential chopper, walked the red carpet with the king and waltz past state security with ease and faster than Charamba himself. He even bragged in the audio about how he does this, saying he is the son of the father. I end up eating the airport, but about to go my son. Depending on the scope of door and egg, but a farmer married cap and take about to go to the tower. So, what's that today? Each and each and each and each. So, let's go to the door. Up in the Morrison, up in the Morrison of VPR two cox zoga. I'll phone you when I get to Italy. Goodbye, my son. I shed the Randy Ganga Mutsqua. Goodbye, my son. I'll call you when I get to Italy, Madame Morrisqua. Second, I'm cut cut is and would take advantage of that. All in government and the ruling party safe for the ZANU PF Youth League, which has close connections with Mike Chimombe, have spoke about Chivayo in harsh tones. First was government spokesperson Nick Mangwana who spoke in tongues and riddles, then ZANU PF Director of Information Farai Marapira, who could not bring himself to call out Chivayo by name and instead just used innuendos. Chivayo himself first denied the audio was generated by him. Using a statement released on X, he said his protagonists Chimombe and Moses Mpofu were briefcase businessmen. Saying, open quote, I categorically deny having any business relationship with these two illiterate individuals or concluding any dealings in terms of which they would be paid what they are publicly demanding, close quote. This statement was in sharp contrast with what Sharamba tweeted when he appeared to be acknowledging that Chivayo, Chimombe and Mpofu were indeed strange bedfellows. He wrote, open quote, you have business partners who dribble one another. In the ensuing fallout, one of them allegedly name drops in order to scare the rest. He wrote, acknowledging the three were partners. Thousand. 5,000, madam. Oh, Maria, we're going to pay the name. That's not our name. Five years away. Gah. 
Mpofu has an eye for tenders and connections to get them. In 2017, he was behind the delivery of biometric voter registration kits to ZEC through a company called Luxton Group of Companies in a 7 million United States dollars deal. Chimombe draws his power to enter into lucrative deals from ZANU-PF, where he is also a central committee member. Former Triple C leader Nelson Chamisa took to social media to condemn the corruption, saying instead the problem starts with President Manangagwa. Open court, it's rottenness everywhere. The extent of rottenness and corruption stinks to high heavens. As they say, the fish rots from the head. Chamisa wrote. Reporting for HSTV News and Current Affairs, Chinge Tochidi, Harari. President Emerson Munangagwa facing the heat on how he handled his Russian visit, where he accused neighbors Zambia and Malawi of sleeping with the enemy, leaving him lonely as now backtracked on his utterances. Munangagwa is instead trying to win back the Zambians and Malawians, with his information minister Jenfan Muswere telling journalists Zimbabwe and Zambia were inseparable. The, uh, the, 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 the relations just ended there. And thereafter, both the British and the Americans they have not looked upon us. They think that uh, we are too much inclined to the East. But we have no apologies at all. We should be aware of the particular victim that he refers to. But it's just to underline that our international relations are governed by the engagement and re-engagement strategy. And that um, we are a friend to all and in enemy uh, to none. Zambia is our neighbor in the geographical reality. Uh, with a long history from the federal days uh, all the way to the contributions that we worked together during the liberation struggle. And at the same time that we are seeing this truth, I might not be aware of some of the questions. The ruling ZANU-PF is fearing a long winter in the future following the close fall of South Africa's ANC in the just-ended elections. President Munangagwa, addressing his party's Politburo meeting, raised concerns over the performance of the ANC in the elections, where they failed to garner a 50 plus 1 vote that would have allowed them to form a government. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has been forced to call for a government of national unity in an effort to move the country forward. Comrades, I challenge us to maintain vigilant and resolute, sorry, I challenge us to remain vigilant and resolute in the face of the neo-imperial machinations of our country's detractors. Lessons and emerging trends against the former liberation movements within and beyond the region are stark reminders of the sustained hegemonic tendencies of our erstwhile former colonizers. We must raise the political consciousness of our membership to defend our country, our independence, and territorial integrity now and into the future. Bearing in mind that the existence of former liberation movements is under serious threat. This was recently demonstrated in South Africa where the ANC has lost its majority for the first time in the 30 years. Harare <laughs> City Council is potentially losing millions of dollars each month owing to a billing system which is in shambles. Mayor Jacob Mafume said his council did not even know the exact number of properties that the city had and therefore meaning some people could be pocketing the money or going unbuilt is that uh, I, we need a baseline. We need at any given time to have the statistics of the potential houses that need to be built. We need to have the statistics of those that are paying and those that are not paying and the reason. And we need this word per word and in totality the whole city. 
So what I'm finding uh, difficult to get my head around it is no one can give me to the exact dot the number of houses that we potentially have to build, that we are building and how much they are paying. Because that is the basis of where we need to begin from. We need to begin from that basis. You need to know your customers, because these are our customers. And these are fixed customers because they've got fixed addresses. So every urban council must and should be knowing the number of households to the dot. Uh, I, I've got a lot of reasons, the incompetence, uh, sheer negligence, and uh, I, I, I believe that we need to sort that out uh, very quickly. The Many young people in the rural areas have had their lives transformed owing to the Green Jobs Initiative being driven by the United Nations through its agency, the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. Speaking at a two-day workshop, Monitoring and Evaluation Specialist Caroline Chaumba said the initiative aims to create sustainable jobs and help Zimbabwe meet its SDGs. And uh, through the voices of its main stakeholders and participants, the project has provided an excellent opportunity to reflect on how best practices in also learned on employment creation and efforts towards more inclusive agri-food system can inform national policy and strategies, as well as more youth-oriented development projects. Part of these efforts involve bringing youth to the table and enabling them uh, to actively participate in policy dialogue on employment and green economy. The exhibition outside are tangible result and evidence of what these young people are capable of. Let's uh, therefore <clears throat> take, this uh, take this as an opportunity to support their noble causes, which we all, we all witnessed the, these uh, past two days. We were reminded this morning, let us treat them as business people. There were many important lessons, and FAO assures you its commitment that these will be pack packaged in a report that will be owned and endorsed by the youth participating in this project. This report will be shared with you uh, soon, in the coming days. Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time we come together to strategize, design, and implement both programs that provide sustainable, decent green employment opportunities to rural communities as well as policies that support the country to make the necessary systematic adaptive changes and address environmental degradation. It's up to all of us to revitalize the sector, to ensure decent employment opportunities are being created for you while supporting the environment. The goal of the Green Jobs for Rural Youth Employment Project is to contribute to achieving the SDG by reducing rural poverty, addressing youth employment issues, combating the effects of climate change, and strengthening local food systems. We are doing all this in green jobs opportunities in rural areas and agricultural sectors of the young people. So the project had two outcomes. Outcome number one, which is to provide entrepreneurship and employment opportunities to the youth in a green economy. Hence, the theme of our learning event today, Youth in Agri-Food Systems, Green Skillings for Green Jobs. And our outcome number two focused on national policies. The intention is to have national policies and the strategies better integrate green jobs through the rural employment aspects that we talked about. So having this goal and the certain objectives that I have highlighted, these are the results, the achievements that we have noted to date. Malawi was thrown into mourning in the early hours of Tuesday following the death of its vice president Saulos Chilima and nine others who were on board a military aircraft that crashed killing everyone. 
Zimbabwe has since joined the world in mourning the death of Malawi's vice president. May I, on behalf of our partisan PF government and the people of Zimbabwe, my family and on my own behalf, express my sincere condolences to our dear brother, His Excellency President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera, and the people and government of the Republic of Malawi. Following the passing on of the Vice President of Malawi, Honorable Dr. Saulos Chilima, and the nine other people in a plane crash. Amid allegations that President Munangagwa's government has captured the judiciary for political ends, he has made what his opponents believe is a controversial appointment of high court judges. On the list of those appointed is Justice Ngoni Nduna and Faith Mushure, both former magistrates. Lawyers who refused to be named said the two have been used to handle political cases against Munangagwa's opponents. In most instances, the accused have ended with convictions which were later reversed by the High Court. In another story, the magistrate court has threatened to go digital by 2025. The court, which has in the past embarrassingly lost dockets in alleged corrupt deals, will now be going digital. This will see electronic filing, saving and management of court documents. Uh, the major uh, achievement has been digitizing the courts. Uh, you'll be aware that on 1 May 2022, we launched the integrated electronic case management system, and the first phase covered the commercial division of the High Court, which was the first paperless court in Zimbabwe. And we also launched the IECMS in the Constitutional Court and the Supreme Court. Then um, we then launched in the uh, Labor Court and the Administrative Court. Then uh, last year we launched in the High Court, the General Division of the High Court. And now the plan is that come 1 January 2025, we are going to launch the IECMS and the Master's Court. So that is the biggest achievement in terms of access to justice because what it means is that even if uh, you are outside the country, you can still access your court documents. You can have a virtual hearing if you consent to it. You don't need to travel to Arab to get into court. You Former liberation war fighters are unhappy over the manner in which the government is handling their welfare. The men and women who fought in the war that brought independence say most of them have been thrown into destitution while their children are failing to access education owing to neglect by President Emerson Munangagwa's government. To go back to Zanupif, it's a betrayal to the uh, citizens of Zimbabwe, to the whole nation, because there's nothing that I fought for which I believe is in the moving in the right track. At mm -hmm. we a few people. Taka wira rujinji wesel we Zimbabwe. Let alone isusuvacho ma war veterans. We used to be told to turn of gutira kumusha. And yet we are living in abject poverty. When I say we, I'm actually referring to my colleagues. The majority of them are living in abject poverty. What do you do with the pension of uh, 200, you know, zig? What do you do with the pension of 600 zig and 120 US dollar? What do you do with the pension of that? And the person is, have a look, you are not working. It's not even to be enough to pay your electricity bill. And some of them, the majority of all veterans, the, the majority are landless. Vakanzi vakaita jamba jere kutora maprazi, vakata wale wafuti ni mashefu. Havana maprazi yoye. Vachi wakapu wa maprazi. Angori mama mu hunting areas. They can't afford, they don't have the capacity. Kutiva kwantisi kukukukukukukurima maprazi. Mamu tuwa chingeti muri yao. So saka apana. It's so painful. Turning to sport, Tinashe, tell us how the Warriors or Warriors played in their World Cup qualifiers and their next game. Thank you, Gaddafi. Welcome to Sports Review and Preview with me, Tinashe Matambo. 
Following the postponement of Kosafa Championships, the Castle Laga Premier Soccer League is back in action as confirmed by their communications and media liaison officer, Kozaibare. The return of a PSL comes as a painkiller for the football lovers after witnessing a devastating double loser to, for the Warriors in their Group C World Cup qualifying games against Lesotho and neighbours Bafana Bafana, who beat them 3 1, leaving the team limping and the bottom of the log with a, a measly two points. These are the fixtures. On Saturday, March Day 15, we will see troubled Warriors coach Jairo Stapera's high flying Manika Diamonds traveling to play Yada AFC at Hart Stadium. While Blaue Chiefs at Luveva Stadium will welcome a resurgent FC Platinum. Simba Bore exchanging blows at home with the new boys RNL Movers. However, attention will be focused on the battle between defending champions Ngeze Platinum and Chicken in who clash at Baobab Stadium. On Sunday, bottom of the log standings. Wangi FC will host the green fuel. Islanders will seem to be running out of fuel at home where they will face Bikita Minerals. Dynamo sa coach Genesis Mangombe will be back to fight his demons at the Rufaro Stadium against the Electricity Boys of ZPC Kariba. Pressure is mounting on Mangombe who will manage just four wins in 14 games. Chembere Zaloza is a loida. Chitembo the Caps United, I affectionately known, who will travel to face off with the Tel 1 FC at Bata Stadium. The Rangers College FC will also make a trip in Mondoro where they will play Chego to Pirates. Two former Warriors defenders, Jimmy Tigere and Victor Kamuka, have dismissed the circulating reports in which they are purported to have been training with the Guerrero Bears, the top flight team, Tel 1 FC. When contacted for comment, Kamuka distanced himself from the reports, while Tigere was also singing the same tune. That was the full sports update with me, Tinashe Matambo. Back to you, Gaddafi. We turn to the social media video of the week. It's a Shivayo affair, with some ZANU-PF supporters who got cars threatening to send them back to their owner. Uh, good morning, I'm going to say a week now, Shivayo. I'm going to say a week now, Shivayo. The way of the repayment is in relation to the audio that is circulating on social media in which in your personal capacity you undermined the authority of the MBS. Magava Shoresa, you the public, you might address your Makava Ita without respect. I'm one of the beneficiaries of the Matuta Akwaya Magat Chengera for defending Zanipia, for defending our president, for defending the best interests of the Nikadi Zimbabwe. But in my personal capacity, I'm not even happy with how you. you with how you address your issues, especially in your private place or in the public, with your friends, with your family. You cannot address our president in Chitanga Akandi Shiaza, as if we were in Kamana King. Our president is not your friend. He is someone you hold with a high esteem, with so much respect, in which you should address him appropriately, even in your private or public place. And I'm one of the beneficiaries of the Matuta Akwaya. I got tangled for defending the NPF, for defending our president and our interests in Zimbabwe. For today, I'm going to once alligator and Zanga to Tora against you. I'll never stand with you. Come. I'll never stand with you. With what you did, that's a good as a pachin. I respected you, Sanders, here to do some more. But for now, I hold no respect for you until you apologize openly to the people of Zimbabwe, to our president. And to me too, was under affect. He told to Akwa Yamagan Tengere and Koma. Whenever you feel that I'm speaking against you because of this to Eta Akwa, you can take it in Koma. The reason the Yamagan Tengere and Moses here, and I will not stop defending our president. Thank you. Let me once again urge you to subscribe on our YouTube channel. This is all you have to do to support the work that we do and allow us to continue giving you unmolested quality news on your favorite channel. Press the subscribe button before you leave. This was the weekly news brief with me, Gaddafi Wells, and the team behind the HSTV News and Current Affairs. Until next week, good night.
谢。